All right, in this video, I'm going to do some more SAT math questions um, that are from the Princeton Review. So in this example, it says, if you can read it, it says if 2 raised to the 4x minus 4 equals 16 raised to the 5th, what is the value of 2x? All right, so in this one, so again, 2 time raised to the 4x minus 4 equals 16 raised to the 5th power. I think probably the easiest way to do this one is to recognize that 16 is actually a power of 2. So we can actually write 16 as 2 raised to the 4th power. And then we have, again, not doing anything to the left side. Remember, if, if the exponents are in parentheses, you can multiply those. So we'll get 2 to the 20th power. So it says 2 raised to the 4x minus 4 equals 20, excuse me, 2 to the 20. So that means the exponents must be the same because we've got the same base. So we have 4x minus 4 equals 20. Now we can add 4 to both sides. If we add 4, we'll get 24. You could solve for x, but they want to know the value of 2x. So I'm simply going to divide each side by 2, and I'll get that 2x is equal to 12. So that'll be your answer down here. We'll just be 12. Okay, and the next problem, it says if f of x equals 3x squared, at what x coordinate do the graphs of f of x and f of x minus 1 intersect? So there's a couple different ways you could do this problem. You could graph each of these and look where they cross. You could do an algebra. You could set up an equation. I think probably the easiest thing to do on this problem is just plug and chug. Okay, so these are all your x values. So maybe let's try one. Okay, maybe let's try x equals 2. So if I plug that in, so f of x again is 3x squared. So f of x minus 1 would be 3 times x minus 1 squared. So let's see, if I evaluate this at x equals 2, I'll get f of 2 being 3 times 2 squared. I'll get f of 2 minus 1, or f of 1, to be 3 times 2 minus 1 squared. <clears throat> and this first number, 3 times 2 squared, works out to be 12. The second one is 3. Well, these are certainly not equal, so that means 2 wasn't our, our solution. And you could basically just keep checking these. Let's try x equals 1 half. So here you'll get f of 1 half being 3 times 1 half squared. And then if I plug it into the x minus 1 version, I'll get 1 half minus 1. But again, now I'll get 3 times negative 1 half squared. But since I'm squaring them, they're both going to turn out to be positive in any case. So it looks like x equals 1 half is going to be the one that gives you your solution. Okay, so x equals 1 half is our answer, not this other one. All right, the next few problems are these free response questions. So in 9, it says if 2.5 x equals 25, what is the value of 1 over x plus 10? All right, easy enough. I'm just going to solve this first one for x. So we'll get x equals 25 over 2.5. <clears throat> and, well, 2.5 goes into 25 10 times. So it says what is the value of 1 over x plus 10? It would be 1 over, well, 10 plus 10, because now I know my x value which is 1 over 20, or as a decimal, is 0 .05. <clears throat> okay, number 10, it says, the first term in a sequence is 8. <clears throat> Every term after the first is obtained by multiplying the term immediately preceding it by 1 and a half. <clears throat> and it says, for example, the second term is 12 because 8 times 1 and a half is 12. They want to know what the fourth term in the sequence is. So, okay, so my first term is 8. <clears throat> if you multiply if you multiply by 1 and a half or equivalently 3 halves, we get the next number 12. <clears throat> well, if you multiply 12 by 1 and a half, 
what number do we get? That'll be our third term in the sequence. And then we want to know the fourth term. <clears throat> okay, so you may be able to do these in your head, but let's just do it the long way. So 12 times 3 halves, we can make that into 12 over 1. <clears throat> if you think about this as being 12 over 2, that's 6. 6 times 3 is 18. That'll be the third term in my sequence. <clears throat> and now if we take 18 over 1 and multiply that by 3 halves, again, 18 over 2 is simply 9, and 9 times 3 is going to be 27. So the fourth term in our sequence and our solution to this problem would simply be 27. All right, <clears throat> let's keep on going here. <clears throat> so in 17 it says the faces, or excuse me, 15, the faces of a cube are numbered with integers from 1 to 6, so that the sum on the opposite, so that the sum of the numbers on opposite faces is 7. So 1 and 6 are opposite, 2 and 5 are opposite, and 3 and 4 are opposite. It says if the cube is thrown on a flat surface so that a 4 shows on the top face, what is the probability that a 6 is on the bottom face of the cube? Well, the probability would be 0. We know that if there's a 4 on the top, there has to be a, there has to be a 3 on the bottom. So the probability that 6 on the bottom would just be, well, 0. There's no probability of it happening. Okay, It's definitely not going to happen. Kind of a strange little question to me. Um, 16, it says if A and B are positive integers, what is the value of A times B? Okay, so they give us this weird expression, A times 2 plus A times 2 squared plus B times 2 cubed plus B times 2 to the fourth equals 42. A and B are positive integers. So I don't know what else to do other than simplify this down. So we'll get our A times 2. So we have a times 2 plus a times 4, if I multiply it out, plus b times 8 plus b times 16, that equals 42. Well, I don't like writing things this way, so I'm going to write it a little different. So we've got 2a plus 4a plus 8b plus 16b equals 42. Still not sure what else to do. I can always combine these things. 6a plus 24b equals 42. But notice now I could divide both sides by 6. So if I divide everything by 6, I'm going to get a plus 4b equals 7. Well, now if you think about it, again, a and b have to be positive whole numbers. Um, I don't see a lot of numbers here that would work. Um, you know, if I make, I don't have a lot of choices for positive whole numbers if I'm going to make it four times that number, because if I make zero is not a positive whole number, I could make b1. If I make b equal to two, it's already going to be too big. So automatically, I know that b equals one. But if b equals one, that applies, implies that a has to be three for this to work out. Well, again, it asks for the product a times b. Well, a times b would simply have a value of 3 then. Okay, So your answer for that question would simply be 3. Um, let's see. I think the next ones may run me out of time. So let me stop this one here. But again, um, I'll do some other SAT math videos. So feel free to take a look at them. If you have any questions, just let me know.